Good morning from Barcelona. I wish I were here with you enjoying this amazing part of the world that Tasmania must be. I'm going to present you our new georeferencing tool, GeoPeak. It is a collective effort between the people you see here, Agustí, our lead developer, Arthur and John, who have extensively worked in conceptualizing and bringing into practice the georeferencing process, and myself. The idea for the need of friendly tools for the difficult and time-consuming task of georeferencing came about during a workshop on quality in georeferencing held in Warsaw, Poland, back in February 2020. A preceding world survey on georeferencing practices helped determining what affects data quality down the line. We found that georeferencing was not given the importance it has and that better tools were needed. Thus, we took action on two of the workshop recommendations. Performing an assessment on georeferencing data quality in GBIF data and developing a new georeferencing tool. We did confirm the poor quality of georeference data held in GBIF with respect to documenting spatial uncertainty, which is crucial for rigorous ecological research. For instance, the modeled range size of Wazuma ulmifolia a tree in the tropical Americas, can vary twofold when uncertainty is taken into account. Unfortunately, a low percentage of georeferenced specimens have information on spatial uncertainty and, also, not all ecological studies take this information into account when using this data. At last year's Tadwick conference, we corroborated among colleagues from our community the need for a simple and standards-based application. Thus, we decided to leverage our previous work with the Natural Muse Sciences Museum of Barcelona and start developing such a tool, which we named GeoPeak. We will now watch a short demo of the tool so that you can have a feel of what it looks like and how it works. This is the main window of GeoPeak. All the screen is occupied by a world map, which we can control using the left sidebar. We have controls for layers, visibility, allowing us to choose between OpenStreetMap and Bing Maps layers. We have controls for zooming in and zooming out of the map. We have controls for digitizing line polygon and point geometries, controls for editing and deleting these geometries, and two extra controls for working with well-known text format and for entering point data via keyboard. On the top of the screen, we have a search bar with which we can search and import localities from OpenStreetMap data from around the world. On the right, we have a collapsible info box where the data and metadata from our georeferenced site will be displayed. It complies with Darwin Core format and can be easily exported as we will later see. The links to the corresponding Darwin Core fields are provided. Finally, at the bottom left corner, GeoPic offers information on the coordinates and the scale of the map. Let's now take a look at how to georeference a locality. We zoom in to the Norfeu Peninsula in the Cap de Creus area in northeastern Catalonia, Spain, which we will use as our georeference target. We select the polygon tool and start digitizing its perimeter with mouse clicks. Here we do a very coarse digitization just for demo purposes. To finish the polygon, we click again on top of the first vertex. Once the polygon is closed, GeoPic processes the geometry and provides us with the point radius data. 
you can see the centroid and the circle of uncertainty defined by the radius. In the info box panel, we can see the centroid's latitude, longitude, coordinate uncertainty, spatial fit, among other Darwin core fields. Then we type our name and any comments we may have, and we are done. Once finished, we can easily export the data in spreadsheet format with or without headers. Since this represents our first export, we will copy the data with headers. We go to the spreadsheet and paste from the clipboard. And there we have the georeferenced site in Darwin Core format. We will now use the well-known text utility to import a locality for which a corrected centroid is necessary, as recommended in Chapman and Wixorex's georeferencing best practices document. The locality is in the coast of Angola, near Luanda, and represents a segment of the Luanda River. We click on the WKT button, paste our location in this format, click on the OK button and Geopic processes it. As you can see, a corrected center that sits on top of the geometry has been calculated by Geopic, otherwise it would have fallen outside of the river segment. You can see the new Geoffrey site data in the Infobox panel. Our name is still there. And again, we write down our comments if needed. We copy it, this time without headers. Go to the spreadsheet and paste it again. And this way you can grow your list of georeference sites using Geopic and a spreadsheet. Geopic also offers us the ability to easily capture geometries from OpenStreetMap data. Suppose we have a Bubuk owl collected in King Island in northwestern Tasmania. We can type the location in Geopic search bar, choose it from the list, and Geopic returns as the perimeter of the island. Now we just need to capture this geometry by clicking on the import button and Geopic provides us with the georeferenced location with its centroid and its radius of uncertainty. A thing worth mentioning is that along with all the georeferencing data and metadata Geopic also exports the georeferenced site in WKT format, corresponding to the footprint WKT Darwin Core field. In the info panel, you can click on a link to an explaining page for the tool, where you will also find a link to the GitHub repository. and you also have access to the help page of Geopic. Geopic is already accessible through the link on the left. The tool is hosted at GBIF, which we want to thank for their support in helping make it available to the community. The tool is open source and you can install your own instance if you wish. Just visit the GitHub repository link for more info. And if you find a bug or want to propose a future enhancement, you can raise an issue within GitHub. We'll try to solve any bugs as soon as we can and we'll consider proposed enhancements for future releases. We hope our tool can contribute to standards-based, accessible, fair 
quality data. Thank you.